in Avedis Hashem, al Derech Achsidis, one of the most important things is Midas Emes, that what you do should be true. And there is ideal truth. There is a truth of the Eivishter. There is an absolute truth. There is an Emes Lamitei. And then there is, you know, Svas Emes Tikin Laad. Everybody's Emes. Your own personal Emes. Like Dr. Rebbe says in Tanya. Everybody has their emes. The nekuda tichoyne, the nekuda emtsoyes of each madrege, this is the emes of that madrege. And when you talk about that idea of emes, one of the things which is so important is just like you're not allowed to under-demand from yourself, to under-define yourself, you're also not allowed to over-demand or over-define. In other, pers- in other words, a person holding on a lower level and insists on approaching Avedis Hashem on a level which is beyond the station ends up no place. He, the avoided that he's able to do, he isn't doing, and the way that he's doing, he cannot do. And of course, this is one of the great challenges of Avedis Hashem is Nisht Sudan and Zach. To know where one is holding and to serve Hashem based on the Madrege where they're standing. Um... And of course, there are so many different examples, possibilities for this idea of um, what the truth is and what my truth is, what the absolute truth and what my truth is. For example, there's Yechud Elah and there's Yechud Tato. There's Chuv Elah, there's Chuv Tato, there's Bittl Ayesh, there's Bittl B'Metzies. All of these ideas speak to different truths. There's Avarab and Avazuta. Of course, higher is truer if it's more honest. And when a chassid is in a higher madrege, and he's closer to the a higher truth, so there's an expectation of a higher truth, that's his avoided, that's his station, that's where his work is. And when a person's on a lower madrege, so then to aspire to a level which is not realistic for themselves is, is, is not good, it's self-destructive, it's a bad thing. And there are, like I said, many, many examples for this, yeah? One of them is discussed in Tanya, in the Chinuch Katan, the introduction to the Shara Yechid Vemunu, which we learned right before Shavuos, which is upon us. The Maimur we're about to start is, uh, it's from Pashat Bamid, but it's a Shavuos Dika Maimur, Usfartem Lochem, where the Alter Rebbe discusses two kinds of Ahava, and you have the same idea also in Tanya, in the first Chelik. The lower level is called to force yourself to love, to make yourself love. And the higher madrege is uh, um, the idea that tzaddikim are in advekas when HaKadosh Baruch the lower level is a struggle and it's a fight. And you have to force yourself. The higher madrege is incredibly exhilarating and uplifting. But the Altareb makes it very clear not everybody's holding by the higher madrege. The higher madrege assumes having dealt with the Nefesh Bahamis, having dealt with the Yetzir Hara, having overcome the Yetzir Hara and achieved this level of uh, delight or peace or light and pleasure. And... Right? It's critical, it's key, it's paramount to know where we're holding and to serve Hashem based on the level we're on rather than the level that we have a fantasy to be on. And with Hashem's help, if we're honest, then uh, we grow a little bit. One of the examples for this entire question of serving Hashem in a lower level versus a living serving Hashem in a higher level is the difference between the Spilus and Tvekas. His spoilus and dveikus. You know, in Chabad they use the word his spoilus. In Poland they use the word his slahavus. In Tanya you have in a number of places the word his slahavus. Occasionally in a maimer you'll have the word his slahavus. But as a rule the Rabbeim use the word his spoilus. The literal translation of the word his spoilus is to react. 
the literal translation of the word dveikas means to be one with, to cleave to. Or as I like to say, and I've told it to you in my modern that we learned recently from the Rebbe, dveikas means so one with HaKadosh Baruch Hu that you're representative of Him. Not that you're attached to Him, but that you're presenting Him. Your you're avoida, your being is representing Him. His spoilus is barash. When a person is emotionally re- responsive, He's reacting to the Eivish that it's loud, it's noisy, it's, tumul- it's tumultuous, it's tumultic. Dveikos is deep, Dveikos is quiet, Dveikos is peaceful, right? And there's a lot of discussions in Hasidus, like for example, what's called the Sugi Ruach Rash Eish, which is my mother from the Friedrich Rebbe, you have it in Ayim Beis. Ruach Rash Eish is a story of Yahweh Navi, which is the... One of the Avtedas that we read, maybe it's Pashas Pinchas, the Avtedas of Yahweh Bar Carmel. I think it's Pashas Pinchas, maybe I'm wrong. Um, well, Yahweh Navi runs away and he has a vision, he sees the Merkava. And the Merkava, he sees steps. The first thing he says is Ruach. Ruach means a, a tornado. In other words, a physical force that's huge, which is representative of a spiritual force. And then the Pasuk says, Leib Ruach Hashem. Then there's Rash. Rash means literally a tumult, but Rash is understood to mean an earthquake. Uh, earth-shattering event, Leber Rash Hashem. Vachare Rash Eish, and again, Eish, I'm assuming, means a volcano, an incredibly gargantuan, gigantic natural force in the world which changes the landscape, it changes everything. And of course, it's representative of God's power. Leber Eish Hashem. And Achare Eish, after the fire just killed Mamadaka, there's an almost imperceptible voice, is a quiescence, is a voice which is so quiet you can barely hear it, and that voice is the Kaddish Baruch. And the Yohan Navi envisages, he sees these steps, Ruach Rash, Eish, and then the killed Mamadak. Now, part of the interesting part of the story is that the Yohan Navi obviously was holding on the Madreg of killed Mamadaka. He was holding on the Madreg of relating to Lukus directly, because he reaches there. But at the same time, he only gets the killed Mamadaka by passing through first Ruach Rash and Eish, the lower three levels. Because even a Yid who's holding by Dveikis, even a Yid holding by a much higher Madrege, uh, uh, oftentimes has to go f- through the lower steps in order to achieve the higher steps. First Ruach, and then Rash, and then Eish. Ruach is one kind of his spoilus. Rash is the second kind of his spoilus. Eish is the third kind of his spoilus. That a person gets to kill Mamadak. In the Maimorim of the Rabbeim, the Rabbi Rashab and Ayyem Beis, in the Friedrich Rabbi, the Maimorim. They connect Ruach Rash Eish to the four worlds, Asiya, Yetzir, Ebri, Atzilas. And they also connect it to different parts of davening. Haida, Sukkot de Zimra, Bechaz Kishin Krishma, and Shmanes. Where Ruach is the lowest level, and Rash is the second level, and Eish is the third level, and Kel's Mamadak is the Amida. Like you know, we've talked about this many times, it's my modem from the Rebbe and from the earlier Rebbe on this. In this form, that there's a sula mutzav ar savereisha magia shamayim, which is a ladder, which has four rungs, which represent the four worlds: asiya, yitzira, bria, tzilas. And when a Jew davens, he starts off as they with heidah, meidani, submission, acceptance. That's asiya. Then he raises himself to the world of yitzira, which is the world of emotion and teva. He's passionate about the abish based on his personality and his nature. Then he comes El Mabriya, where he's also passionate about the Eibishter, but it's not based on his nature, it's based on his mind and his creativity. And then he comes into Atzilus, which is where he becomes a Merkava, where Hashem rests on him. Where it's not him approaching a Kaddish Baruch Hu, but he's in a state where the Kus rests upon him, and obviously that's the deepest and the most quieting, that's the Amida and Shemayin essay. there's a, a presence of a Kaddish Baruch Hu upon a person, and as a consequence it's quiet. And you have to go through these different steps. And the way Hasidus explains the necessity for it, you have to, asura mikan leskar of the sham, in life, if you want to get close to something lofty, or sublime, or holy, or spiritual, you have to go away from the lower in order to come into the new. You have to go away from the outside and come into the inside. And therefore you have to go through all of these different steps until you come to the deepest depth. You know, in the haftair of, of Shvuis, which is the Merkava Yecheskel, the same idea. Yecheskel has a vision. And his vision is bringing him into the, to the throne room of HaKadosh Baruch Hu to the Merkava. 
And it starts out with Ruach Sa'ara, Anan Kavad, and Eishmas Lakachas. The first thing he sees is what we call Shalosh Kavad Zatmeyaz Lagamr. He sees the outer Hecholis, he sees the periphery, and he has to pass through that level, and then there is Noiga, and then he enters into the worlds of Kedusha, and then finally he, you know, there's a Kisei, and Allah Kisei, there's Adam Shalak Kisei. It's also the same idea, you go from the outside to the inside. Now in life, in life, none of this is so simple and so easy and so uh, neat, right? Life is complicated. Meaning to say, in terms of our avoida, in terms of our involvement in HaKadosh Baruch we're all in different places. And it's not as simple as it sounds for us to be able to, you know, to go from the outside in, to go from the, we, we, we're, we're in different places. Sometimes we're in a state of hispoilus, sometimes we're closer to a little greater depth. And uh, we don't necessarily climb the ladder from the bottom to the top. We get stuck wherever we get stuck. We're holding wherever we're holding. The only thing that really matters above all else is that it should be metanemis. Wherever we're holding in our Avedis Hashem, it should be metanemis. So here we have a Maimir, which we're going to be learning. It's a Svira Tso'aymer Maimir, and it's going to compare and contrast Svira Tso'aymer and the Oymer, which is for barley, Michael Behema. And Shvuas and the Shtehalechem, which were brought on Shvuas, which was made from wheat, which is Chitim. And the Maimir is going to present us with this two step gradualism, if you will, where the first step is a lower level, a level which is more demonstrative, more passionate, more externally excited, because that's where the person is holding. And then the person is going to enter from that into something much deeper, something more sublime, something more, much more quiescent, which is. Shvuas and Shtei Alechem, a much higher level. One of the interesting things that's going to play itself out in this Maimir is that this growth, this going from a lower level to a higher level, beginning with the excitement, the passion associated with Sviras Eimer, and culminating with the depth and the quiescence which is associated with Shvuas and Shtei Alechem, is that it has to do with different kinds of mind, different kinds of seichel. When a person is on a lower level, he's using his mind in a more superficial way. When a person is on a higher level, a person is using his mind in a much, much deeper way. In other words, when you're using your mind to relate to Lakus, the very idea that you're using your intellect to relate to God makes God separate from you. God is a concept, God is a topic, God is a study that you're analyzing. When your mind is analyzing HaKadosh Baruch Hu and understanding HaKadosh Baruch Hu and reacting to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that's what we would call in our culture Chitzenius. You're not relating to what he is or who he is, you're relating to the symptom of him. When you get to deeper and higher levels, it's a different kind of mind. You're no longer using the mind that objectifies or objectively sees Hashem as a separate entity, but rather it's the way the mind is seeing Hashem as Hashem as a part of one's mind. Um, in other words, the whole idea of objectivity, the way it's used in the modern world, in the secular modern world, is that in order for someone to be objective, it has to be completely dispersonal. You create a box, a space, which is called an area of experiment, and you make sure that it's surgically clean, there's nothing in it that contaminates it, you're outside of it, and you observe it as an outsider. Chassidus would argue, Taita would argue, and really logic would argue, that when you're talking about involvement with deep things, with other people, this whole idea of objectivity, which brings you closer to the truth of the Eivishter, also is very limited. Because when you relate to the Eivishter as an entity separate from yourself, any kind of understanding you're going to have from him is going to be limited. And on the higher levels, it's by definition subjective. The higher level of understanding Hashem is almost seeing Hashem in your neshama, the the idea of being able to see him as separate from you breaks down and you see him as you. You see, you experience him from the inside. It's a much deeper idea. And this Maim is going to argue that the objective intellectual observing of HaKadosh Baruch Hu creates the hispoilus, the emotional responses, the passion on the outer levels. And the higher levels and the deeper levels of understanding create a quiescence. And like I said before, it's going to be connected to the Oymen and Svira Soymen and Shavu and Alech. And that's what this Maim is about. The integrity of passion versus the greater integrity of depth and quiescence. And I just want to share uh, a vart, if you will. 
that Ubagdama uh, it's always good to tell stories. That the uh, Rebbe Rashab said a maim in Tafresh Samachay, nineteen o five. The Rebbe said a maim in Zochar Siyam Zochar Tishas Lucha Amoli. In Tafresh Pezayim, seventeen years later, the previous Rebbe said the same maim. I'm sorry, um, twenty two years later, the Friedrich Rebbe said the same maim, and he developed it. The Maimon the Rebbe Rashab, let's say, is seven pages or eight pages. The Maimon previous Rebbe is, let's say, 15 pages. So every idea by the Rebbe Rashab, which is a few lines, could be with the Fidik Rebbe, a whole painting, a whole chapter. In that Maimon, the Rebbe discusses three levels of Amalek. So, of course, the, the story that's famous is that Rebbe Sadia Liberov came to the Fidik Rebbe for Purim, Bezai, that year. But he was not there the Shabbos before, he wasn't there for Jezokhan. So when he came for Purim, the Friedrich Rebbe told him, Had you been near Shabbos, I would have discussed the fourth idea of Had you been near Shabbos, I would have discussed the fourth idea of Amalek. The three Amaleks that the Friedrich Rebbe discusses are based on the Amaleks of his father. He said, I would have added a fourth Amalek. One of the Amaleks the Friedrich Rebbe discusses is the Amalek of the Balmeich. What's Amalek? Amalek is many things, right? But one of the things Amalek is Asher Korcha. Amalek cools you off. As they say in Yeshivish and in Yiddish, honest pilots, don't get excited. And when Amalek cools you off, his purpose is not he's cooling you off because he's trying to bring you to a higher truth. Amalek is cooling you off because he wants to take away your passion. So Amalek can even come along to a person and say, what are you getting so excited about? It's the Abishter. Of course the Abishter is a Kel Yochel. And you're a big Chochem and you understand this. Don't get so excited. And it's called Amalek. Because the person is Davka supposed to get excited um, about Alakus and about the Abishter. Even though... It's, it's simple and it's obvious. The Ebishter do what he wants. When it's for us a pele, when it's for us an ois, when it's for us a moifes, we have to display, we have to present our spoilers. And if we don't, it's a molek because we're stealing from ourselves the benefit that comes from that excitement, the benefit that comes from that passion. Now, even though the passion that we're experiencing is chitonius, there are deeper levels and higher levels, but when someone's on a lower level, and they don't allow themselves to experience external he- passion because it's pastnished, because they have greater depth, because they have greater integrity, so then they're stealing from themselves the integrity of their lives because by a pneumius they're not holding, chitzenius not permitting themselves, and it's called Asher Korcha, it's called Amole. And that's one of the ideas which sort of emerges from this maimed, that you have to go from lower levels to higher levels, and when you're holding on the lower level, you do the avoid at the lower level, even though Admittedly, it's a lower level. It's a chitani as dekavoy. So let's get to the Maimon itself. We're going to begin now. Usfartem lochem line three. Usfartem lochem imochan as a Shabbos v'gemet tishmecham ishmem. It's a classic sefer of Maimon. And and um, it's going to explore, like I said to you, Oimer and sefer of Maimon and shvuos and shtei alechem. In the basic two steps that I already told you. So the pasuk says usfartem lochem imochan as a Shabbos. You have to count for the day after Shabbos, and of course. You know that the Gemara says Machas Shabbos means Machas Pesach, and the Tzedukim disagreed, Mitten Gans and Tumul, and the, the Rebbe spoke many times. But the Nun Aleph, 1991, was the Kviyas, where Pesach was Shabbos. The first day of Pesach was Shabbos, like it was this year, Tosh and Tes. So the first day of Sefer Seimer was Sunday, Machas Shabbos. And the Rebbe used to bring the idea that it's Tzedukim Meidim Bazer, that it's Tmimes, not just to the weeks of Teir, it's Tmimes to the weeks of the Ebesh Akkad, where the Maise Bereish is. And um, then Machas HaShabbos and Machas HaPesach become the same thing. But the meaning of the Pasuk is Machas HaShabbos is the day after Pesach we start counting Sefirah. So Eimer Tisbrech Hamish we count 50 days. So the Rebbe begins, the Alter Rebbe begins, Lohavon calls out, we must understand this idea of counting the Eimer. Why does the Pasuk say we count 50 days? We only count 49 days. And of course the answer is you only count what's countable. You only work what's workable. And when you reach a shleimus, in that area, the 50th gate happens automatically by Matana, as you'll see later in the Maimon. Gam Lohav, and the second question is, Pirush HaSfira. The meaning of the Sfira and how we do it. We say, Yem Yem Echad Lo'emir. Today is one day in the Emir. And Yem Shnei Yom. It takes two days in the Emir. We don't say the second day, we say two days. And then the same is true. Shem Shavu Echad, V'chein Shnei Shavu, V'chein Chulu, V'chein Kulu. We always identify the Emir as not days that are passing, but the days that are being accumulated. In other words, we don't say, 
one day is gone, two days are gone, three days are gone, we say one day has been accrued, two days have been accrued, three days have been collected. You see the days as units that you've already acquired. Today is three days as opposed to the third day. Today is four days as opposed to the fourth day. Today is the eighth day. Today is eight days, which is a week and a day, and so on. The Rebbe asks a simple Palabatash question. He should have said, Hayyem Yem Rishin is the first, Hayyem Yem Shein is the second, Hayyem Yem Shlishin is the third, and instead of saying that, we you say Shnei Yamim, Yei Mecha, Shnei Yamim, Shlesh Yamim, which means it's not the third day, it's three days. You're taking along the days from before, and of course the Rebbe wants to understand the significance as well. So the Rebbe begins on line 9, Hine, in order to answer these questions, we have to analyze the idea of Pesach. Sfiras Oimer, Karban Oimer, Sfiras Oimer, and Shavuos and Shteyalech. In Yena Sfira, the count of the counting Sfiras Oimer is as follows. Give a Pesach, Hayom Akriv Ma'imer. On Pesach, the second day Pesach, they brought an offering of an Oimer, which is a certain measure of barley. Now the reason they brought barley is very poshet. Because it's early in the season. It's April. And in the early part of the season, in April, the wheat is not yet uh, prepared. Like it says about just for eight at the end, Afilei's Heina. Vachita vachusemes leinuku ki Afilei's Heina. They're not yet ripe. The barley is beginning to become ripe, and even the barley is still very moist, which is why it says, Aviv koloi boesh geres karmel that when they would take the barley, when they would harvest the barley to make this carbon, they had to roast the stalks with the kernels over an open fire to dry out the kernels before they would crack open the husks and take out the seeds and in order to be able to grind them in a mill. Moist seeds you cannot grind. You have to dry them out because it was very early in the season, which is a simple explanation for Pesach they brought barley because the wheat couldn't be brought. And as you know, the halacha was, once the barley offering was offered on Pesach, you will allow to eat chadash. Yidin will allow to eat in their own homes from the new crop, from the new produce. But you couldn't bring it as a carbon. In your own private life, you're able to eat chadash after the second day of Pesach. And of course, now that there's no Beis HaMikdash, the halach is you wait till the end of the 16th, wait for the sun to set on that date, when that carbon aimer was brought, and then you're able to eat chadash. But in order for chadash, you're brought as a carbon, you have to wait for shvuas. Shuas they brought shtei alechem, two loaves, which was made from wheat, also from new grain. And after you brought the carbon shtei alechem, then they became permitted to bring karbonas from chadash as well. That's the technical idea of bringing the carbon meimah. But of course, Hasidus explains the neshama, the pnimias, the soul of this idea. That what? Let's read it inside. The carbon aim was made from barley. As the Pasuk says, it's the first harvest that they did, bismanahu at that time. And then the Alter Rebbe continues and he says, They brought two loaves of chametz, was the only carbon seed of chametz, which was made from wheat, on shvuas. Shuhu, because shvuas is man, the time when you harvest wheat, um, while the barley is harvested before. And the Alter Rebbe concludes, um seidim, from the time of the harvest of barley, which is Pesach, until the time of the harvest of shvuas, you have to count. And our mind is going to explore all of these ideas. So the Rebbe continues on line 12 and he says, Let's explain this. The prophet Yechezkel Ezekiel has a vision. And he sees the divine chariot. And of course part of what he sees is the Malach. And there's two types of Malachim. There's Malachim that go on missions on behalf of a Kaddish Baruch. And then there's Malachim who should stand in his presence in honor as an honor guard. And mostly of what Mechavit Yechezkel is describing are the Malachim that are standing in the Ebishtis presence, Kfayachal. He describes in great detail their, their, their legs and the wings and their arms and the wings and their face and so on and so forth. And amongst the things that is written there is upneyem v'kanfeyem prudes mamayu. That even though on the lower parts of their body they're joined together, they're fused, on the higher part their face and their wings are divided up. Pirush. V'kanfeyem, what is the meaning of their wings? Apifosam v'istalkusam lamayla. Their tendency to fly and to ascend upwards. To become included in their source. And the basis for a malach ascending upwards is love and fear, the desire for HaKadosh Baruch, which is called Ahava, and the fear of becoming Chasasham, Karof Makadosh Baruch, which is called Yira. These emotions, on a demonstratively passionate level, on a chitsoyni level, on an external and loud level, cause the malachim to ascend upwards. The Pasuk describes it. 
You go after HaKadosh Baruch Hu like a lion roars. In other words, there's a noise that is involved in following behind HaKadosh Baruch In the there's a cheraim and there's ponim. When you're following behind Hashem, when, you're, when, when Hashem has his back to you, you're using your own tools, your own means to get involved with him, which is your mind and your heart. And in the avoid of Akhra, the Shema, the Kechem Telechu, um, there's a lot of passion. And the passion is called Avaz Hashem and Yiras Hashem, which brings a person, Kvayochal, in proximity to HaKadosh Baruch. Piriyash, this means, Ke'arye Sheba Merkava, like the lion in the divine chariot, Sheshoyeg Vohoyma, that roars and shouts, Kadesh Vegeimer. Vechol Chifzei Vechol Yeshe, his entire desire, his entire aspiration, is li'kolel, li'hizkolel, v'li'hizbatl b'metzies, to become included and to become bottle in the metzies of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But the way he goes about it is with a big tumult, greatest spoilers. The idea of the, of, the, of the axe neighing and so on. So the, the Navi describes that the Malachim are separated in their faces and they're separated in their wings in terms of their ascent upward. The Rebbe is going to explain momentarily that each Malach does it differently, no two Malachim are the same. I just want to mention te- parenthetically that there's a Gemara, which is discussed, of course, in Rambam, uh, where the Gemara discusses the difference between the Makavis Yeshaya and the Makavis Yecheskel. That in one place it describes the Nevi'im having only four wings. And in another place it describes the Nevi'im, the Malachim having, only, having six wings. What's the difference? According to the Nabi, they have only four wings. Two are trusting their le- two of their wings are covering their legs, and two of their wings are covering their face. So the Rambam explains two of the wings are covering their legs that the feet of the Malach, the lowest level of the Malach, should not burn what is below it. And two are covering their faces that the Malach should not be burned by the Giloi which are above them. And in the other Pasuk, which speaks of six wings, so the Pasuk says, Vishtayim yichas ha-porna, Vishtayim yichas ha-ragla, Vishtayim yichas two wings cover the face from being burnt from what's on high, two wings cover the feet from the Malach burning what's below it, and then the last two wings cause the Malach to fly. And the Gemara discusses this, and the Gemara says that there are better times that the Malachim are able to fly, then they have six wings, and then there's Mi'at Hadmos, when the world is in a worse situation, the Malachim still have wings, but they're not able to fly. Our Pasuk is describing the Malachim's flying, however we understand the flying of the Malachim, this is Merkevus Yecheskel, it's not Merkevus Yeshaya, but he emphasizes the idea that it's Prudes, everybody is separate. al the other example for the same, as V'yishar Na'apod, as V'gemir, Holoch V'goy, that the oxen in the story of the Plishtim who were turning Dara Nakedish to the Jewish people. And they were trying to determine whether the punishment that they received in Beis Dagon and all the other places of Makadish Baruch Hu was Mikir Nikiris. So they took two nursing calves and they put, they harnessed them to a wagon. They wanted to see what they would do. And of course they went to Yerushalayim, even though they had to leave behind their children. Holoch v'goy, they went and they were crying. And there's different translations of goy, whether they were crying because they were sad that they were leaving their children, or goy because of joy. But be that as it may, their animal was serving Hashem with emotion, with passion. And the Rebbe says, Hupnei Sheh Sheh Merkav, which is the ox, the divine ox of the divine chariot. So the Rebbe says, You should know that the idea that Malachim have wings, that with these wings they're able to fly, Heim Prudis. They're separate. Mil Milo. What that means is, Each one has a different Madrege. She Madrege se Echad. Muvdelos u Mefredis Mechaveri. One step, one's level is distinct from another and no two are doing it the same way. Which is, you have in Tanya, of course, the idea of Hanestaros la Desham ala Keinu. Neida basharim baile. Kol chad vechad lafum shura delay. It's written in the Agdom of Tanya. It's written in the beginning of Perek Mandal, chapter 44. That when it comes to the Pneumius of Yiddishkeit, which is called Yudke, as opposed to the Chitzanius of Yiddishkeit, which is called Vovke, when it comes to Yudke, no two are alike. He brings from the Gemara, the Ramban, and Berachis, about Charcham Arazim. Every Jew serves the Shem in a different way. Mitzvahs are the same. Teir is the same. Teir Achad, Mitzvah to Kulona. But the Neshama of Teir Mitzvah, the Avas Hashem, and Yiddish Hashem is very personalized. No two are the same. And that's the meaning of the word. Prudes, each one, Shemadrega Echa, the level of one is Muvdalos from Fred Bechaveri, is separate from his fellow, from another. Each one serves Hashem in a different way. And part of that is the fact that there are Mitzias. In other words, on the one hand, each one serves Hashem in a different way because it's so personal. On the other hand, each one serves Hashem in a different way because each one contradicts the other based on their personal, based on their Mitzias. 
The Rebbe says on line 20, you could exceed, the first example is the lion, which represents chesed of all things, believe it or not, which has to do with ahava. And this is machane yib mechol. On the other hand, you have the midah yira, which is representative of the left side, then gavriel, and then of course you have the middle, which is pnei nesh, the face of the eagle. He midah memotas, it's an intermediate midah between chesed and gavura, between ava and yira, which is rachmanus, which is compassion, kenesh a yor kinev game like an eagle has compassion. Now the maimorum of the Rebbe, the Rebbe asks the question, that a lion and eagle are treif? What are treif animals doing in the Merkava? So the Rebbe says, because in the recover, they're higher than the Sheir. Because everything works, the Chesem Ham is happening. When something falls lower, the eye has a higher source. So the Sheir down here is kosher. So the recover, it's from a lower level. The Pniyari and the Nesha down here are treif. With the Simon, the recover, they're even more kosher, and even higher Madrey. And for the Pnei Nesha, you have the Midas Arachmonis. And I just want to tell you something, and I want to tell it to you because I just want to tell it to you, that uh, in Chesidus, you have the Midas of Chesed, which is Ahava, basically. In Avoida, the mid of Yira, Gvura, which is mid of Yira in Avoida, and then you have mid of Teferis. So usually, Tanya Perek Memhei, and Nigar Satchuva, Perek Vav, I think, mid of Teferis is connected to Rachmanis, having mercy on your soul, having mercy on the Eibishter. But in one place in Tanya, in Tanya Perek Test, the Alter Rebbe uses Teferis as Simcha. Not Rachmanus, but Simch. Because Midas at the Ferris is the middle pole. And when you're not connected to the Eibishter, the Midas at the Ferris is the Rachmanus on yourself and the Rachmanus on the Eibishter because of the distance. And when you are connected to the Eibishter, then it's no Rachmanus, it's Simch. It's a similar Mida. Both of these Midas are Midas Emtsai, Kava Emtsai. So the Rebbe says, that's the Pshat Prudes. Each one serves Hashem with great emotion, great passion, great excitement. No two are alike. Each one serves Hashem in a different way, and each one serves Hashem with an excitement. Line 23, this is what the Apostle says, For S.S. Chamal Kamfei again, the Jewish people left Egypt, left Mitzrayim, they should carry them on the wings of eagles. Which is, Midas Ataferes, Rachman. Kimach, Mas, Shahul, Yisrael, B'Mitzrayim. We all know, when the Jewish people were in Mitzrayim, they served the Ebesh, the Bechem, Yil, Buvain, and Bagash, with mortar and brick, which was physical. And of course, this means to say that they were preoccupied, they were distracted by materialism and loneliness and could not engage in a deep way in a relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. They were not fit to merit to the great and additional advantage. What they would receive when they gave us a tere. Which is called a meaning upon him, bit upon him, upon him, el upon him, upon him, lip upon him, the face of a yid and the face of a Kaddish Baruch Hu converge. What prepared us that when Shvuas would finally come, we'd be ready to receive the Torah? Ki my day bin chinus rachmonus. Hashem has rachmonus. The compassion of a Kaddish Baruch Hu qualifies us to receive the Torah from the Mebushin and can finish on the wings of eagles. Shai day zev al esamal brings us close. So the Rebbe says, "Midas arachmonus." So when the Eibush does rachmonus on the yid and the he's ready for matan Torah. And according to what I told you before. You could say alternatively that in addition to the Midas of Nesher and the Rachmim, which brings the Neshama in proximity to receive it, there's also the Midas of Simcha, which is also Midas of Teferis. Line 27. Vatam Shekanfei and Prudis, for the reason their wings are split. Humipnei Shekol Shif from Vichayus, and their entire flow in life is Mabchinus Malchus Yisbar, the Ebishas kingship. The involvement of Hashem or Elam is only Malchus. There's Ein Seif, which is one and infinite. There are Sfiris, which are not necessarily one, but have a certain depth. And then the lowest Sfiris is Malchus. Malchus is the idea of Hashem being involved in the lower worlds. And in as much as Hashem is involved in the lower worlds, since the lower worlds are Pirut, in Malchus itself there's also a Pirut, there's a divisiveness, there's a separation, a separateness. And this is the Avoida of, uh, of Prudis. Everybody serves Hashem in their own way. Line 20, 29. So the Rebbe says, <laughs> that Midas HaMalchus is hinted in the letters He of Hashem's name. In other words, there's Yud, K, Vav, K. The second He is Malchus. It says in the Pasuk, in Bereshis, and of course it's brought so frequently in Chesidus, that when the Ebesh created the world, they created the world with a He. And of course you know that Behi Barim is Asias Avraham. Shehu Bechinas Ruach Pivyas Baruch, which is the wind from Hashem's mouth, 
with which the Ebisha creates the world, Ki Beruach Piv called Svam, with the wind of Hashem's mouth, the Ebisha created um, um, the whole creation, everything that created. So, on the one hand, the Ebishta's mouth is so strong it can create. On the other hand, it's quote only words. It's only chitzenius. And of course, as you know from Chesidus, from Tanya, that the person's words have two parts. There's the air or the amplification, the bellows that create the sound. And then there's the individual concept, the individual sound, the tzura sa'esias. Both of those things come from Malchus, which is a place of Pirud, like it says, Vestach, and so forth and so on. So the ribu is in Malchus, not higher. Like when a person speaks words. So when a person speaks words, there's two parts. There's the air that they blow on the vocal cords to produce the sound. And then there's the individual sounds. And the air itself, this is the sound of hay itself. The expression which is brought, also the letter hay is, it has no specific sound other than being the air, which is amplified from the lungs. Now I just want to share stamma zaya vort. Don't get too excited. When I was a child, my brothers, as long as they start, played the accordion. And of course, accordions are almost a relic. You don't see accordions much. But when I was a kid growing up, there was a lot of accordions. An accordion is a musical instrument which is based on blowing. But it's mechanical. It's not electromagnetic. You actually have to push the accordion in and out to create the air which blows against the strings which produces the sound. And you push these different buttons and this keyboard which is going to affect that the air that you blow is going to hit a different string and create a different uh, sound. So when you play the accordion, you have to constantly push the keys so that the sound, so the, ear, the, the, the accordion will move and make sound. What happens if you finish playing a song and the accordion is open? It won't close. Because that, that, uh, th- that accordion, those, that, uh, those perforated slits in the uh, whatever the material the accordion is made of, are airtight, and there's air inside, and they're not going to close unless you release the air. So there's an air button. If you finish the song, you don't want to push a C or a D or an E and produce a sound which is not necessary and out of place in an audience. So you push an air button, and it's released. <laughs> so the source of all sound is the air itself. And when the air hits against the various different strings, it produces different sounds. That air is the letter hey. And the Atala brings in Tanya and he gets the Kedish, Shimon Hei, Behei Nivre Elam Hazen. That this world is primarily the product of what's called the Chaymer Oisias, the, the material of the letter, the Hei itself, the, 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 the air rather than the Tzuras Oisias, which is more sophisticated and subtle. And the Rebbe continues, Behei Zu, Behei Nasei Mitzvah This letter Hei, which represents the air with which Hashem speaks and creates everything that exists. By combining the Tzuras Oasis and the Chaymer Oasis is the five sources of sound, which is, of course, the throat and the palate, the teeth, the tongues, and the lips that produce all 22 or 27 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Kamesha Hevelah Diba, like the air of one's speech, which by itself is just a hey, but because it hits against the vocal cords, Mitzchalak Lehei Mitzvah, it's divided up into the five sources of sound. Al Derech Moshal, by way of analogy, Kach Bechinus Ruach Pivyas Barach, the air that the Abishta speaks. When he creates the world, is mischalakli, is madrig, is chalukis, is divided up to various different steps. Or mavdal, is dumizu, they're distinctive from one another. Beginning, of course, with the uh, malachim. Dal, machne, shechina, the four camps of the angels. Machne, mechol, pnei arye, and machne, gavila, pnei sheir, and machne, uh, the malach of rachamim. Pnei nesher, and then, of course, you have pnei adam, which is four of the five sources of sound are represented by the four or five, by the four ragli amarkov, the four... The key point is, this is the concept of Pirut. Each Malach serves Hashem in a different way. So now comes the question. We're speaking about Pneim V'Kanfeim Prudes. And we're also comparing Pirud to Malchus. And we're dividing the Pirud into four. So the Rebbe has a kasho made to How could we say that the Pneim V'Kanfeim Prudes, everything is divided up into four? Because it's going on Chetzei Yisraelimus. Where every thing is divided up into four, but there's five sources of sound. And the fifth is Gich, which is Meitzachech, the palate, the source of the sounds, Ge Yud Chav Kuf. So the Rebbe says the fifth Meitza, the fifth source of sound, is the opposite of the other four. The four other sources of sound are Perudes. 
they're defined by the distinctiveness. Chesed, Gvur, Teferes, Malchus. Each Malach serves Hashem in a different way, and with a different medium, with a different tumult. The fifth, this is the Pneumius. This is where the quiescence would come in. As I explained to you in the beginning of the class, that on a lower level, things are excited and external, and over there, everybody is distinctive. And on the deepest levels, is the unity and the quiescence. And that's the fifth level. Bechinus Eisah Shalom B'mreimah that makes peace amongst the different kinds of Malachim. Bechinus Mechol Sar Shalmayim and Gavil Sar Shalesh, which is fire and water. Mechol Gavil, they should never be able to get together. Ve'ein Amayim Echabah B'chulu and they don't destroy each other. The fire doesn't eat up the fire doesn't eat up the water. The water doesn't extinguish the fire because of the presence of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Mepnei Ashpoh Haklolis Shabahem because although each one is a different derech and avoida, and as I said before, this has to do with pirud. But their source is one, that relative to this place of unity, so even though on a lower level one is very excited and diverse, in their source, they're in a state of, of, uh, of unity. And they, there's, there's awe and they say holiness and so on. So the Alter Rabbi here is presenting two ideas in these psukim. On the one hand, the diversity of different types of malachim and so on. Another that the source is a pnimius, which is a unification. And he continues on line 39, that the malachim are burning like the countenance, like the liking, like the, like the likeness of lapidim, of torches. He, which is going amongst the chayas. And the Rebbe picks up on the word he and focuses specifically on the letter he. Pirush he, the meaning of the word he, is he, misalechas. It means the letter he. Because the letter He, which is the air, which is blown against the vocal cords that produce all the various different sounds, is the source of it all. And because of this letter He, they're able to be passionate and they're able to say Kaddish. A person can't speak without air. But the air hits against the Piro that produces all different kinds of avoidas. And he adds that we now establish the idea of Prudis. Division. But we also understand that there is a Maitzah he, which is unity. So the Rebbe continues and he says as follows. You have two words, right? Ufneim, vekanfeim, prudes milmail. That's written on line 12. So the Rebbe is going to observe in a moment that on top of the Fneim, there's a, there's a Zokiv Godel. There's a, there's a Tam Hamafsa. There's a Trap, musical note which separates. Ufneim is read by itself. And then Kanfeim, prudes. And the Rebbe is going to explain the reason for this pause is because Pneum is actually the opposite of Pneum, the of, of Achtas, of unity. The fifth level. So the Rebbe Amshoch of Ashpazu, this bringing forward of godliness, Nirmez is Bemilas of Pneum, is alluded to in the word of Pneum. And he says, Sheshal of Tam, Zokiv Godel, the Tam, the Trap, the melody is a Zokiv Godel, which is one of the many Trap. And of course, it's a Tam HaMafsik that pauses. Shu Hefsik. Maimir, it's a, a musical note which separates. It's lahafsik bein upneim the kanfeim. You have to read upneim and then upkanfeim put it separate. Which is because of Rashi Leima, shepneim the word pneim is bechinas pni miyusam is the depth of the malachim and faket on the level of the depth einam prudes they're not divided they're one. So upneim the way the malachim are standing in pnimius they're all unified. And then the Kanfei Prudis, when they come to a Chetanyi's Dekel level, they're divided up. Um, and he brings a path, 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 and he That's a place of unity. That's the place of depth. That's the place of quiescence. But the other four is the place of manifestation and division and passion. And therefore, there's a zakiv godel on the word of Pneim to separate the Pneim from, from the lower Madrigas. So the Alter Rebbe here is presenting us with a mystical form for the basic point of this Maimir, which is that on a Chitzan Yisdika level, which is much more excitement, there's a lot of division. And on a Pneim Yisdika level, which is much more quiet, is unity. Line 49. And because, and the Rebbe is now going to continue exploring the prudes, not the ufneim, not the actors, but the period. 
not the unity, but the division and the manifestation of the excitement. The love and fear which comes to the Malach. They should burn like fiery coals. But it doesn't mean quiet fiery coals, but loud fiery coals. As you see momentarily, they should say, Kedusha is in Bechinus Hey. It's in the lowest letter of the Abish's name, which is the letter Hey. So the Rebbe explains, Shuhu Almad is God. It's the level of godliness which is revealed to the lower world. In other words, a limited level of godliness. The Hainu, in other words, Machmas Hasagosam Berin Baruchu. The way a human being is able to understand the Insev. Hanim Shech Almad is Gali, which is brought down into the world of revelation. In other words, to understand that Hashem, as Hashem Koyachal comes down into a low level. And in a basic way, which includes Shuma Malakal Almad, Vesevel Kalam Rabachul. So the Ahava, the Yira, is based on Hasagah. But the Hasaga is, uh, if you will, it's understanding of the Kus and the lower Madrig. And accordingly, the love and fear that comes from this understanding, who be his galus is revealed, and in a thirst which you can feel, and this external demonstrativeness, this external his spoilers, the, um, it, it's, it's only chitanius, but on the other hand, it's the level the person may be holding on at a particular point. The Pasuk says, Their face, their countenance is like burning coals. Like coals attached to fire. The fire is still attached to the coal. But it's, it's showing itself in a demonstrative way. 56 now. The same is true when we say the words that the Malachim called Srafim are standing above Hashem. Srafim Eim Dimalei. And of course, you all know the Teda. How could a Malach stand above the Abish Teda? And of course, it means above Midas the Zohar. And this Teda is above Hashem Tev on this and so on. But he translates Srafim Eim Dimalei in the same way. Pirush, Mimal claim. What does it mean on high? Bimakim Pasuach Levach, a place which is very open. Tainu Begilui, which is revealed. And revealed is always Chitadius. What you see on the outside is only peripheral. And a person who's holding by Chitanias, that's his avoider to show this peripherally. Begil Eiz Vitatume Sa'av with a great intense love, um, which is demonstrated outwardly. V'chein, but part of the Chinosuas, Adonai made David the same. is true by the oxen he mentioned before that they carried out an Akedish, it says. V'yeshan, our part of the game, Halach V'gali, they were going and they were crying. V'pnei Chinosuas, Adonai, they were carrying the Holy Ark, Shu V'chein, it's Alma Dezgali. That even the holy ark is a of Gilui, and therefore Nishba Lam Shafalaki, that he got a divine flow, this Meshad is to be able to sing the Gois and Tene Vikhul. Like I said to you, one of the Mafash says of a Gois means Gaya Shal Simcha. So this idea is fascinating. That he called the Aran Akadish Alma Des Gali. Aran Akadish is the deepest thing in the Vesa Mektosh. And I suppose he means not the Aran Akadish per se, but the way people are able to perceive what Aran Akadish is. In other words, there's there's more to it, there's greater depth, but what they're going to able to see is going to be the Chitzenias. And in as much as this is concerned, Adon Akedish is Chitzen. Pedic base, line 61. Vihine. Hashpov Amshachazum. This life, this energy, this flow. Shenem Shechaz Bamalochim, which came down on Malochim, Lies Arye Shoyeg Vishoyer Goye Vilies Boyer and Bukhulu. That the Malachim display, they demonstrate passion. Each one in a different way through an influence that comes from on high, obviously, that reflects itself in their personality. It goes under the title Sa'ira. So it means a barley. Sa'ira also has as a shader the word Sha'ar, which means a gate or a shia, which means a measure. But it has a hay at the end, and the hay denotes a lower level. And in addition, the shin is a sin. It's a shin smallest. It's not she'oira, it's se'oira. And by the way, it's, it's been noted that the Rebbe, as a rule, would say a shin yamanis. The Rebbe didn't say sidus, which means hair. The Rebbe used to say shidus. He avoided saying uh, a sin, which is a shin smallest. I think almost uh, and always. Now, I want to pause and talk about this a little bit, okay? So the, there's a lot of my modern chassidus about this. Um, there is Kedish Yisrael Avay Reishis Tu Wasoy that the pronunciation is with a Choylom like a Vov and it's written with a He and it's connected also to the idea of Chita and Soira that you have first of all in the base Hamikdash that on either side of the main entrance there was Shari Min and Shari Smel there was a right gate and a right gate left gate 
and in Hasidus, and so one of them it says it was open for people to go into. And the other one was never opened because the Shekhinah was there. And there's a whole discussion in Hasidus about the difference between the Sharimin and the Shar Smail. And basically what it says is that the Shar, one of the two Sharim is very open, like the Shara Ulam, it's open, it's easy to enter into. And the other is like Shar from the word Shar, like a hair. A hair is hollow, and there's actually life inside, but it's very, very diminished. So there's two concepts of a shad. There's an open gateway, which is Meshamash Kisav Yitzir. It lets things in and out very easily. And there's a reduced gateway, which allows things in through pressure, which is the idea of a shad, of a hair, or shyness. In other words, the difference between shad and sad is the difference between Tzimtzum and not Tzimtzum. When you have a great open gate, it allows things through. When you have a diminished opening, it comes through. But that's Tzimtzum. And the Rebbe is going to link everything that we just discussed about Kanfei and Prudes. That the Malachim serve Hashem in an externally passionate and demonstrative way. And each one is distinctive. And each one is serving Hashem in a different way based on what it's understanding. It's a limited Seichel Dike. Involved with Hakadosh Baruch Hu, the beginning of it is Tzimtzum, is represented by the word Seir. So he starts. What's the connection between Seir and Malachim? Seir means a barley. What's the connection between barley and Malachim? Simple. Pirush Michael Vashbos Hamalachim Akrayim B'Shem B'Hem Es V'Chayes. Al Pi Halacha Barley is animal food. Now in 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 the modern world. What we used to call in the olden days animal food is now called health food, like black bread and so on. But in halacha, barley is considered Michael Behem, the food of animals. And of course, there's so many of Hasidis that will explain Michael Behem as being the food of the Nefesh Abahamis, of the animal soul, which you engage with and you correct through passion and so on. But he immediately translates that over here, behema doesn't mean the animal soul of the person, it means the animal, which means the malachim. Malachim akapetachayis. Like it says in the Pasuk, pnei arye, pnei sheir v'chuli. That there are various different animals, they serve Hashem in a, in a demonstratively passionate way, each one in a different way. And of course, you probably remember the Pirush HaMishnah Yisrael Rambam, which is brought to the Mamari Hasidis. That, every, that malachim are like animals, because like animals, they're polar creatures. Human beings are balkola palam kulam. Every human being has a full panorama, a full set of emotions from the extreme of chesed to the extreme of gavur and everything in between. So there's a balance, there's a skalos, there's a ticking, there's an order. Malachim are like animals. They have one or two emotions. Those emotions are very, very strong and they're void of all other emotions. So they can only serve Hashem through what Hasidus would call their teva, their specific pathway to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which is very passionate and very limited and also very distinctive. V'nikra se'era, and the idea of barley, which is connected to animals, in other words, it's connected to malochim, because se'era is ma'echel behema, and again, part of the idea is that it's the word shara with a sin, which means a gateway which is metumtum. It's al shem shi'ur hei, that the word se'oira is actually two words. Shir, which means measure, of the letter hey. Pia, shir, umida, nimshach, mamchilus hey. It means to evaluate and to measure based on the letter hey, which we discussed earlier. The yut, ke, vav, ke. And the second hey of the Abish's name is merumiz in the words, behibara, behibaram. And then, of course, later on, he, mishalech, has been achayis, the hey, um, which is the source of life in the lower world. And the idea is. Tzimtzum and division. V'hainu, b'chinas hi, m'salach has been achayis. This is the he which goes amongst the animals, which means the malachim to create different ways of serving HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Li es beidim, to be passionate. V'li es mareim, kagach li esh, that they should, their countenance should be like fire attached to coal. V'nimshach b'shir umida. The passion is brought in a measured, and the shir means in a evaluated in a measured way. Lehischalek in a way which is divided up, ledalad machas hashchir into the four camps. Lochalecha b'madregas each one according to its level. Belias madregas echad muvdal u mufrod mechavere the step of one should be separate from his friend. Vechein madregas kolechad veechad the step of each individual one is niktzevet b'mida is fixed with a certain measure. Shenim didlei misheishes mebereishes which the Abish to fix when he created the world. Because malachim are limited. 
They serve Hashem in different ways, taka with a lot of passion and excitement, but they're distinctive. Which is why, of course, in Hasidus, they connect Malachim to standing still. Right? The Shaitan Pasuk, goes on Malachim, there's so much discussion in Hasidus. And of course, when you learn the Baimorim about Malachim being Aimdim, they point out that Malachim can make huge motion, huge movements, from Sevev Klam to Amalek Klam. But it's all considered Aimdim. Because whatever the Abish that made a Malach to be, that's what the Malach is going to remain. He's going to serve Hashem in one step, but diminishing or adding, is never going to change. Hashem designed the Malachim to serve him, but Hashem designed the Malachim to serve him through Shir He, through a measure which comes from the Ace He, the letter He from the Abish's name, where each one serves Hashem differently in a limited way. And again, as I said to you before, one of the words which is very useful in this context is the word teva. Because teva means a fixed nature, like an exoskeleton, which you can't change. This is what they are. The teva of this malach is chesed. So he serves Hashem with infinite ahava, but only ahava. The teva of this malach is gevura. So he serves Hashem with yira, but only yira. And so forth, and so on. So there's two points. The first is the idea of limitation, and the second is the idea of division. Prudus. And he continues, Usha'ira bishin smolus. And the barley is a, a, a shin smolus, which means a sin. A, the dot on top of the shin is on the left side. Miloshin usviv of nisaramayyid. There's a postal usviv of nisaramayyid, which means that those who are closest to M. De Abish the treats like hair. And of course, the Gemara says that Kodesh Baruch Matayach Matadikim Kuchuta Shairo. But he's going to explain it from the idea of division and limitation. Which is again a pasuk, which has to do with trepidation and fear. That he brings a whole bunch of psukim that denote the emotional responses of the malachim, which have to do um, with the idea of shin smallest. Contextually, what the point is, in other words, I'm, I'm not translating these psukim, I'm not analyzing these psukim. Contextually, what this means to say is that each one serves Hashem in a, in a different way, in a limited way. Vehine, line 75. We understand that by malachim there's something called pneim, which is the depth of the malachim, which we're going to get to next time. And then there's kanfeim prudis. Every Malach serves Hashem in a different way, and it all comes from Malchus and Shir Hei and so on and so forth. So they're all passionate in the Avaj Hashem. They're all distinctive in the Avaj Hashem. And the source that motivates their passion and motivates their individuality in the Avaj Hashem, as Malachim, Tluya Ba'Avaj Yisrael Lamato. Depends on Yidin. What Yidin do affects uh, what the Malachim do. And I'm just going to throw this in because I want to. And there's a sefer called Haraga Chavar, I believe. There's a yid in the soul called Borachov, Rav Borachov. And he wrote a biography of the Raga Chavar God. And one of the stamas they avert, one of the things he brings in that sefer is that the, the Raga Chavar had a minute to daven very early in the morning. So they asked the Raga Chavar why he daven so early. So he answered because it says in the post, like, Baron Yachat Keich Bebeke. Which means the Malachim, the Malachim had to daven in the morning. But the Malachim can only daven in the morning as a response to the, malach, the davening of people. The Shalom is Yisrael down here. So the Raghat Shavit says, I daven early to allow for the Malachim to daven. That they're depending on Avedis Yisrael. And he explained, When the base of Mikdash was standing, They would offer up a measure of barley. And of course this word, or Sa'ira, is connected to the word Shar, which we had before. Which means tzimtzum and miyut to create diversity of serving Hakadosh Baruch Hu, each one according to its measure. As the pasuk says, "Vehine vakein esayim," the kain would raise up the oimer um, as a carbon, and raising up the oimer gave a koyach for yidden to give the malachim their avoid an eifin of sa'ir. Ubezerusa de la tata ezerusa de la yela through the efforts of the Jewish people to offer up the carbon of oimer and raise it up to Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Koyach they bish to responds in kind. Who has a delay to Hashem's kindness? Shaya de Aor, as Bechinis has a delay in my law, this draws down a kindness, Makadish Baruch, who made in say Baruch. Nase ha laws, Bechinis Aimit. It raises up the Aimit that we offer. He Bechinis Almadis Galia, which is the service to Akadish Baruch, which is defined by the word Gilik, revelation. 
And the word revelation always means diminution. The avoid that a person does that's on the outside, that's externally demonstrative is his gas. You can see it. But it's the shallow of the person rather than the deep of the person. It's the external of the person rather than the, the internal of the person. And the avoid of a lost man is al Gali. Offered up the hand, the handful of oimir on the mizbeach and a fire that came from above. Via days and through this nish b'bechinas hasa'ira it brought down the barley, which means she or hay, the serving Hashem through the ois hay in a way which is divided up into various different ways. Lias ma'achal behem b'malachim, the malachim get their nourishment, which is their koyach, as so to speak, supernal animals to serve Hashem passionately, each one according to his teva. Shei Allahem, that the malachim there should be bechinas beirim kamari alapidim to burn like torches. Will he shake that they should roar? Kadosh Baruch Hu Yimlech Vachulu. So we offer up a carbon name of Sa'ira, and it was raised up Lamaila, and it brought back down Lamata to the Malachim, the Inyan of Sa'ira Baruchnias, which is that each Malach serves Hashem in a different way with a passion. For Lachain says the Rebbe in line ninety two, which is why Ha'Eme Bavetur Masalishka, the carbon Ha'Eme had to come from a carbon Sibur. Every Jew had to participate in the armor, the, the what they call the Machat as a shekel, which is put into the Lishka. They call you soul because the hashpa of the of the carbon name of Sa'idim was meant to give chayes to the malachim that are Hashem and had to come from all of the Jewish people. It's just to us and the Jewish people are holy that the beginning of the Abish is true. O Pirish Rashi Vitargimenes and Shem Kedish. Hainu Truma Reish is to us is a Uhaimir. Line 84, Kikei, the Yisrael, the Havai, the Yisrael, the Yisrael, the Jewish people, are Kedish la Hashem. They're holy la Havai, which is the beginning of the Ebishtiz. Tvua, Tvua is from the word Bia, to bring a uh, produce, a crop. Or Pirish Rashi, the Tagi, Menes, and Shom, Kedish. The Jewish people are holy. What is the Taich holy? Hainu Truma, the Yisrael, which is the Truma, the beginning of the Ebishtiz. Produce zehu ha'oyimir. In other words, in the pasuk kedesh yisrael avaya, we're calling the Jewish people reishes for wase the oyimir, which is the holiness of the abishtes produce. Vahainu. This means ki etzem never shall kisse bechinus truma. When you say that you're not compared to a harvest to wheat, they're the truma, which is the holy part of that harvest. And he adds another detail that we know about truma that it's connected to thought as opposed to speech. The halach is the truma is not measured precisely. Right? When you give a tithe, my sedition, my sesheni, my sense to be exact, you have to measure a tenth. Truma you don't measure. You give it with your eye. You make an image. You make it get an estimation. Because it's connected to thought. So the Rebbe says the idea that truma is associated with an evaluation based on thought is Neshama Salaba Machshav. So the Rebbe says, the first touch in the Apostle, Kedish Yisrael Lavai Ereshes, to us, they did themselves the grain. And the idea that they did themselves the grain is a higher level, it's the level of Kedusha, the level of Machshav. Now go to line 89. It says the Rebbe, Ach, however, in addition to the first idea that Kedish Yisrael Lavai Ereshes, to us, it goes on the idea that Neshama Salaba Machshav is Produce, which is the level of thought, which is a higher madrega. Yes, but gam kim bechinas reishes tuas emes seirim. The reishes tuas that this grain does not only entail the higher level, which I suppose later in the mime we're going to call heat of wheat, the level of thought, but there's also the level of barley, which is idea of speech and simtum and so forth, which is Michael behem. Al derech mashakosav adam behem to shi adeshem that you have two things adam and behema. Um, that the hidden people make us like animals that call ruach because with a broken spirit. In addition, I'm going to explain later. Initially, a yid serves Hashem like a pure animal, and then he raises up to the madrega being a mensch. Therefore, he named. Bechinus never shall kiss Shem Yisrael, the godly soul in the Yid, who bechinus reishes ha'am shach is the beginning of where this inspiration comes from, and al yada nimshach, but this brings down a koyach to the avoida of the animals of the melachim. Bechinus atvua va'asedim hanal grain, which means barley le'elam hamelachim to the world of the angels, betaysves edvigilu ziv, 
with additional light, Hamas Khadish and the Shan Bukha Pesach, which is a new each year on Pesach, Kabai Mirazalak it says in the Gemara, but Pesach and Nidan Allah Tfu. But the point is it starts taka from Yidin, from Odo, but it comes down to Behema, and then the Rebbe says, even though the Seder is comes down from Adam, then it comes to Behema. But there's also a Seder that first Behema and then Adam, and this is the Avoid of Sa'irim. From this extra light in the world of Malach. The Malachim are animals on high. And down here, the animal is the animal soul within a yid. Which is transformed from darkness to light. The seven holy midas. Which we bring forward by Zion during the seven weeks. You may have sphere of counting the sphere of Cholachat Kulamizayin. Each week, of course, has all seven midas, Vechulu, and so forth and so on. So it starts with the Malachim and it ends with Neshama Yisrael. Down here, the idea of Bidar Amidas. The point is that Sfira Sa'imir is connected to Aimer Sa'irim, barley. And what's, a, what's the idea of barley? It's measured and it produces external passion based on a logical involvement with Akadosh Baruch Hu. It, it begins from the Avodah that Yidin do, and it comes down to the Avodah of the Malachim, which then further comes down to Yidin down here, serving Hashem with the Nefesh Bahamis. But this is only a first step. This is a chitaniyas, like a step, a passionate step, or a step based on reason and emotion. The second step is a much higher level, which is connected to Shvuas and to Chitim, um, as we'll do with in the next class.